Right, so this part is mobilizing. So we just talked about like release, right? Uh, whether it's through breathing, whether it's through soft tissue work. Um, so we got the release. Now we want to mobilize the, the joints, right? Especially specific ones here. Now remember, like when it comes to low back, right? I mean, really hips and low back are closely connect connected. Core, hips, low back. Uh, one of the things few people talk about, you, you've probably seen this cat camel drill. So that's what I'm going to do first because, uh, you know, if you, I've talked about the importance of having a stable core, low back, but that doesn't mean like you have to teach your joints, your each segment of your spine to move well. One of the first, like, and I've had quite a few, I would say, back injuries, some, some very, very, very serious back injuries, and, uh, and also, you know, kind of nagging back pain. This is one of the first things I go to. Like, imagine I was waking up from bed, and I'm just like, man, stiff, and like, I'm banged up. Like, the first thing I go to would go to this quadruped position and do my cat camel drills. Now, I'll do a sped up, speed, sped up version to just like see what some people in the gym might do or like where it's, you're just kind of rushing through it, right? You're just, the thing is when you're rushing through it, you're not really working this how it's meant to be worked. What we really want to look for is actually getting each segment to move by themselves. So, you know, if we were uh, doing this with, for instance, with Theo doing coaching, like it would take two to three minutes to do one rep of this. I'm going to take like you through it just a little bit. So imagine I'm starting in a completely extended position. So every segment, I'm extending as much as I can, okay, as well as my, my neck here. And then if, imagine that somebody's putting a finger on each one of my vertebrae, and I'm starting to flex just each one, one at a time, as much as I can. Now I've worked on this, so you may be able to see I'm going through each segment here. Now when somebody's, this is very, very difficult for a lot of people to do, okay? And like I said, I still got a lot of work to do in here, but, I'm, and I'm speeding up through this a little bit. So now I'm going into complete flexion of each one of these. And then I just go backwards, right? So I just go back to extension. So I'm like speeding this up a little bit. And imagine going back and forth like that. Now, like I said, for many people, like when we touch those segments, they can't even move them, right? Or at least it feels like they're not going anywhere. But that's the whole point. We want to teach people how to be able to se segmentally stabilize their spine. Because if a part of your spine, what tends to happen with people when they do that, like parts of their spine move and parts are completely locked up. All of that force of whatever you're doing, punches, rotational, lifting, goes through just those segments that are all, that are, that are basically, uh, that have movement, right? That have control. And that's how you get overuse. Now, I brought this band because we'll actually run this through two dumbbells. Um, and I like teaching this with the band because it gives you something to push. So when we give this to clients, so let's say, you know, we're like, okay, we want you to push this specific segment, you know, now, they can work on just pushing that band just through that specific segment and then having it pull them back, right? Because they feel it, right? So now they're, I can go like, hey, that specific segment of your back that the band is on, I want you to push that, flex it with that disc. Okay, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. As much as you can and pull it back. Right, and then we can shift it. And obviously I'm, I'm speeding this up and just showing the principles and the meth methods and the thought process behind it. Now it's in a different segment, right? And we can go and push that specific segment out. Right, it's a teaching tool. And, and what we do is like take them through without the band and see where they're getting stuck. And then once we see where they can't move well, we use the band to just get reps in that position. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? And then get a couple of areas and then try to get them back to doing this. Once again, doing this cat camel segmental stabilization is incredible, right? I mean, it's hard to explain unless you take, you know, somebody's got cranky back, hips, and you take them through this drill and then they stand up and they're like, whoa, what just happened? Like, that feels amazing, right? And so. I would certainly have you, uh, I encourage you to 
take the functional range conditioning certification. Um, it's where we've learned a lot that FRC, so at the FRC, FRA, kin stretch. Um, it's what we use a lot in the, our mobility sessions as well. And you guys will see that in the mobility, uh, I will say, program for the month that you get. And um, but an incredible tool. Like so, if you deal with any type of back pain, you have clients with back pain. Phenomenal, right? This is a mobilization tool. Number two, like this is one that we've used for knee pain. Use it for a lot of things. Still one of the best. Being able to get our, I would say, hip rectus femoris stretch. Um, actually, you know what? I was just shooting a video on the other side, so what I'm gonna do is switch it up so I'll level this out a little bit. So, you know, for most people, you kinda wanna get this uh, a pad, towel, something underneath, underneath uh, their knees so it's not banged up. And I'm gonna start off by uh, sharing like this, this cue that's very, very important, which is to push the butt cheek to the opposite hip and to the opposite adductor. And notice, like watch, this is my ASIS, right? Those little two bones above the hip. Notice how like they're not level at all, right? So when I push this butt cheek into the opposite hip, now they're pretty much level, okay? So I have level hips. From here, I'm gonna squeeze my glute. I'm gonna align my foot with my butt, make sure I'm all nice and aligned. I'm already starting to feel that stretch right here, okay? Now, instead of holding for time, what we're gonna do is just breathe, right? So we're gonna exhale. Same way as we did with the breathing. Inhale fully into the nose, deep into our belly. And exhale again. So there's no more air, deep breathe into the belly. And you know, if you wanna get a little more stretch, you just lean back a little bit. We want even more, we're gonna reach over. If you need some support, or we like to do a PVC pipe or a mobility stick, we do the same, but just like reaching, right? Getting that lateral side nice and opened up and still squeezing our glutes in. Right, and instead of going for time, we'll just go for six breaths, seven breaths, seven, eight breaths. And it, here's the cool thing about this, right? We call it positional breathing, because you're knocking out like two or three birds with one stone, right? We're getting good positions. We're working on our breath, so our core, uh, and good anatomical position, and again, to obviously stretch out the muscle and mobilizing. Um, from there, we'll do also some pails and rails in this position, which is pushing our foot into the pad, and then pulling it away from the pad for periods of five to 10 seconds. And what that does is it ingrains, I would say, uh, it creates tension, neural tension in these end ranges. So just to give you an idea, so let's say I'm, I'm right here uh, and this foot is back, obviously on a bench. Imagine that once I have that good position, I would cue the client to push the leg that way, right? So that's where I wanna push it into the pad. For, and slowly ramp up, go harder, go harder, go harder, go harder. All right, last five seconds, keep pushing as hard as you can. And relax, okay? Probably get a little bit more of a stretch, and then it's like, I want you to pull that heel towards your butt cheek. So now we want this motion towards your butt cheek. And they're gonna cramp up, right? So pull, 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 pull. All right, they're trying to get off the pad, off the pad, off the pad, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the hamstring, and relax. Right? And what we're doing now is activating these muscles in these end ranges that basically, you know, take pressure off the low back. So yes, we're mobilizing, but we're actually activating too. And I know I said we're gonna say activation. So we're going from release to activate, uh, to mobilize to activate. But some of these actually work together in unison, which is great, right? So I just wanted to show you guys, guys that. From, from there, this may be one of the best, I would say, uh, combinations of, of a mobility exercise for, for your hips and your low back. Okay, so it's, it's a, remember, because it's so interconnected, it's our 90-90 position. And so our 90-90 position, like I said, you got the 90 degrees here, 90 degrees there. For some people, it will be hard to get into that. Like, this will be really uncomfortable. And, you know, they won't be able to do this without their hands actually being down, which is okay. Like I said, we're just working to get better at this. So I'm gonna show you like the sequence, this protocol. So it's a 90-90 hip, I would say position with a stretch, and then we're gonna go into a bear. So we're gonna rotate our hips. I'm gonna show you guys that part, okay? 
Now the cue on this 99 here is most people when they start, if I had a little like, you know, the annoying laser you point at people and it was coming out of my belly button, I want to point that to my knee, right? So my belly button is going to go or rotate towards my knee because now I'm getting my hips into that position that I want to, okay? From here, I'm going to think about my, my glute getting long in the back. So like I'm going to push it back in a deadlift position and I'm going to literally use strength and tension to get myself down like knee, or should I say to my chest to my knee, and at the same time, I'm gonna to try to pull my, my knee to my chest. So I'm gonna close that gap with strength, with tension. While I'm pushing my butt back, even right here, belly button to knee, and as I start pushing my butt back, notice I haven't changed my position. I'm already feeling a much bigger stretch in my glute, okay? But from here, like I said, you may need the support. I can do it without, but I'm gonna show it with, okay, where I'm pulling myself back. Ah, tension, chest tall. Ah. Knee to chest, chest to knee. Create tension, create tension, create tension. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. And now I'm gonna push away back into that same position, okay? And we may work this for a number of reps, right? Five seconds down, five seconds push into the ground and push away. Uh, like, you know, we really do a lot of this stuff and, and we'll go deeper into in separate videos of this. But by itself, like I said, don't let this just become a, you know, lean over. Like you want to use strength to get in that position. Breathe here at the bottom. A lot of times we will relax here and then push away and come back up. And like I said, from here, trust me, this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal, I said hip mobility, hip health stretch. Um, but now from here, we're going to rotate our feet. Now, depending on how your hip mobility is, you may have to bring your legs in a little bit, right? Bend your knees a little bit, okay? But this is what's called a bear, and you can use your, once again, I can stay nice and tall and do it without, or you can use your hands here, but create tension. So I'm gonna create tension in my abs, I'm gonna push this knee into the ground and start opening this one up. So I'm gonna open this up, and while I'm here, notice, I'm pushing this knee down, I'm pushing this knee out. So I'm creating tension. And once I can't go any further, now I'm gonna start bringing this knee up. And when I'm, when I'm in top position, this is called the bear. I'm gonna rip my knees apart actively as much as I can. And with tension, get back into my 90-90 position on the other side and reset. And once again, go into this belly button towards the knee, right? And this would be our drill where we're working that 90 down, coming back up, maybe doing another rep and then opening up. Now each one of these can be a separate drill. Just this part, just opening of the hips of the bear. Like I said, I wanted to show you guys how to combine it because it's such a big bang for the buck exercise for hip low back health that, you know, we like to put them together, right? And so from there, you know, we, we, uh, here's kind of a, a drill that works both mobilization and activation is going to the shin box. So this is our 90-90 position here, okay? Now, and this is our shin box position where the feet just kind of slide in and become closer. And there's a lot of drills that we do from this position. And I, I love this position once again, it's, it's great for improving hip mobility, hip health. In this position, I want to make sure like that somebody's pulling me by a string, okay? My spine is nice and tall because the tendency is, same thing in 990, is to kind of start getting twisted, okay? Because you don't have good mobility. So you have to cue yourself to get tall, get pulled by the string on the top of your head, okay? And from there, I'm going to start actually pushing my, my knee into the ground here, my knee into the ground here. So I'm staying tall. I'm creating some tension, whether you know how to turn your abs on or you squeeze your hands together, whatever works better. Now, I'm going to slowly, okay, slowly is the key, pull myself up into extension. So I'm pretty much pushing my knees into the ground, creating ab tension. Slowly, I'm coming up and squeezing my glutes, keeping my abs on, okay? This is a great, 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 I would say drill for glute strength, hip mobility, because watch, once I go down, I'm gonna bring my arms out to keep myself upright because I wanna prevent myself from doing this. 
So I want to stay upright. And now I'm going to slowly lower myself. Notice how slow I'm lowering myself. All the way down where I softly touch the ground with my butt and release. This is what we want to avoid. So you'll see a lot of this. People just drop. And when you control every aspect of this, we're working that hip internal rotator here, hip external rotators here, right? We're just working those muscles in these end ranges. Very, very important. And from here, what we do is we shift, you know, whether it's, I'm gonna do it without my hands. Uh, like I said, you can use support. And from here, I'm going to shift, hip shin box switch into the other side. And then I do the same thing on that other side, right? Very, very, very powerful drill. And like I said, for working, and like just right now, I'm already feeling tired in my, my hips a little bit, but my back feels like a lot, a lot looser, okay? From here, remember that we, wanted, we, we talked about doing a, um, affecting every kind of muscle that kind of attaches into that hip that's connected to the low back. So uh, one of these great, great, great exercises is an adductor rock back with thoracic extension. So imagine we're in this, once again, an all fours position. We get that foot out nice and long. We push it into the ground. It's level with our hip. And just doing the rock back at first is, you know, you'll feel this adductor stretch here in this position, okay? So what I like to do in this is not only rock back while I'm keeping my back flat, okay? But once you get into this position, you can, this is a little bit more advanced, but still something I wanted to show was externally rotate. So notice, imagine that this is rotisserie chicken, your femur is rot rotisserie chicken, and we're just turning out as far as we can, and then we're turning it in as far as we can, right? So we're working some of that hip socket, getting that mobilization in that position, okay? So your rock back, I also like to do this where I'm gonna rock back and get tall because now imagine like now, now this is like a little bit more of a squat, like upright and we can go and stretch to that position and get more internal rotation, come back out, go from this position, walk ourselves out, push the foot into the ground, rock back. So notice this is the whole sequence out of this adductor stretch. And last but not least, we're going to keep that in the stretch position and then we're going to do a thoracic rotation. Now notice, like I'm looking at my elbow here, I'm pushing into the ground with my other side, I'm reaching with my elbow to my other elbow, so we're just getting that rotation in that upper back, so we can't cheat it, okay? And we could be in that stretch position and get, go for 10. Now you might be saying like, hey, doesn't that go into some of upper back thoracic mobility? Absolutely, but those are so closely connected that this is a fantastic drill to be able to knock that out, okay? From there, what I wanted to show you guys is a pigeon stretch. I'm gonna do it on the bench. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I go on the back of this bench. We actually like to do these, depending on the client's capabilities, um, I would say that, you know, doing it on our plyo boxes also becomes uh, a good option. But I, I'm pretty good, I would say, uh, hip mobility, so I'm gonna do it here, which is okay. But the pigeon stretch, we're going to go we get this 90 position. And I'm gonna push my knee down here now because I have this pad on the bottom. So just here, and remember, depending on the client, this would be a different range of motion. We can do it on the ground. I'll show you a quick kind of regression to this. But from here, there's a couple of things that I like to do, okay? Number one, just staying tall like this, okay, is, is certainly some uh, stretching and, and, and I would say uh, challenging my mobility. Now, I always like to do a kind of like pails and rails, this is what FRC calls it, but it's progressive resistance and regressive resistance. So in every position, we, the, 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 the joint and the, the muscles have to learn how to produce and how to absorb force. So there, in this position, I may now push my leg into the, into the pad for 10 seconds. Stay nice and tall, pushing, pushing, 
push, I'm pushing my knee, I'm pushing my ankle. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Now I'm gonna try to lift it off the pad. Now I'm not gonna be able to do that, but the attempt is what's most important. So my ankle and my knee, I'm gonna try to lift it. And relax. Okay, now from there, what's so great about this, then now I can also go into this hinge position where I'm actively working to get down there. So now I'm going to go and pull myself into this position. And what's great is that I can bring my back knee up and you can see that now, it's a little bit of a different position, right? Squat versus hinge. And I'm pulling myself down. And now I'm gonna push myself away. Knee comes back down. Knee comes back up. And I'm gonna pull my chest to my knee, knee to my chest. and push away, and back down, right? We could do that for a number of reps. We could do that for time. Like I said, that is uh, depending on, I would say the different, uh, the different mobility of the client. We can elevate this. Uh, we can bring it down a little bit more. There's a lot of different things that we can do that would adjust to it. And no matter what their range is, because like I said, if I, I'm on the ground, and like I said, this is a regression. Maybe a client will not be able to be here, but they'll be here, right? You can see how they have a different angle. Their hips are still on top, and they're getting that stretch. And we can work those same, uh, I would say, same kind of muscles and same mobility, but just with a little bit of a different uh, regression and or progression, right? So imagine that these boxes are higher. Imagine somebody standing. There's a lot of different things that we can do to adjust this to the client, okay? From, from there, a combination, uh, and notice like everything that we're doing now, like just doing these drills, I mean, I feel so much looser, uh, and, and obviously I came in a little tight, was training this, that, the other, but, and, and I'm shooting this video for you guys, but at the same time, right now, like I'd be ready, I'd be ready to lift again, I feel great, okay? so. The, this has been called uh, or coined by the time I shoelaces so I don't bust my ass right in front of the camera for you guys. Uh -huh. But this has been coined uh, the greatest stretch in the world by some, right? Uh, and we call it like this is essentially the Spider-Man lunge, right? And there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do from it and there's a lot of good, great things that we get from it. So uh, Spider-Man lunge is basically, you know, depending on how tight you are, you, might, you know, getting this leg up to your hands and putting your hands down, or if you're really tight, you might have to be here. And there's two different kind of ways that we can do this, knee down or knee locked out and punching that heel back. And I like both of these, and we work both of these. So right now, imagine that I'm pushing my heel back as far as I can, I'm, I'm getting long. So somebody's pulling my spine that way, I'm pushing my heel that way. Whew, what a great stretch for hip flexors. This glute's working. Right, I'm getting my nice open chest here, good position. I can come back down. And from here we'll work either, you know, thoracic extension in this direction, or I'm gonna turn away from you guys and push my knee into my shoulder, thoracic extension in the other direction. And a lot of times just breathe here and hold it. So a minute, even two minutes, like those are great, great, like, we can do it uh, for reps, right, and switch up, or we can do it for time. I like for time, if you're doing it on a recovery day, like as a part of a protocol just to make your back feel better, as part of a warm up, we'd be switching up, meaning, so I'll switch up right now, go other side, boom, and then we'd work this other side, right? So, the, but the thing that I like to combine, because hamstrings, adductors are such an important part, that's why we kind of opened the adductors up, mobilized the adductors, is, getting the, the leg back. So meaning, I'm going to watch, go from this Spider-Man position into downward dog. Now, preferably one leg of downward dog, but I'll show you both, right? So pushing away, getting, and pushing the ground away, getting that big stretch in the hamstrings, driving shoulder blades, and then going back into that Spider-Man is a phenomenal combination, but even more so is stepping back 
and doing a single leg. So I'm pushing away now, keeping those shoulders locked in, making sure my hips are aligned, trying to drive that, that heel back, get that hammy nice and opened up, hips aligned, and then from there, going forward into that Spider-Man position, whether it's knee down or whether it's knee nice and locked out, right? And that combination is phenomenal. And you can see what that would work uh, in that, right? Lunge, squat, all of those different positions.